So, are you alive, awake, and enthusiastic about life? So, let's have some more fun. Well, for me, it's fun. Hopefully, for all of you, it will seem like fun too. So, we're going to be doing some stretching our intuitive muscles, having that intuitive practice this morning again as we continue our series on intuition and today's topic is is it my intuition or something else and so just a moment i am going to pick a card electronically from an intuitive insight deck created by kim chesney um, before I do so, I'm going to just have us take a moment and just reflect very simply on some area of our life where we'd like to have a little bit of intuitive insight. If we really isn't anything, just say, what am I open to receive this moment? So before I do that, here's what I want you to keep in your awareness. We are using first impressions and resonance, meaning what we are set and hit, what we're drawn into. And then maybe later on, you can do some discernment as you go into meditation or into the stillness or as you walk in nature and bring this image to mind. So when I show the image, first, I'm gonna have it, you look at it for a little bit. And I'm gonna ask you to see what's the first thing you're drawn to not trying to intellectualize, this is allowing, this is allowing. And then I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and in that space of allowing and ask, is there, is, you know, what's the message? Not trying to figure it out like, oh, there's a, there's a peacock in the picture. I have no idea what's gonna come up by the way. There's a peacock in the picture and in Ted Andrews, book of spirit animals it me you know let me think what that means no this is a allowing not intellectualizing not analyzing not studying not trying to make something happen okay so you may get the intuitive insight you may get it later or this may not be the way but it is just the opportunity for us to practice together so here we go are you ready So just take a moment to become still and just think of an area you might need or, or wanting to have some intuitive insight. Is it your health, career, relationship, or just what is it that my heart is revealing to me? It could be any one of that, those things. So just take a moment. So I'm gonna go to the site, all works well. <laughs> and then I want you to notice what you're first drawn to and then I'm gonna have you close your eyes. Are you ready? And then we're gonna go to the opening of the eyes. And the next thing you might be drawn through to close your eyes, I'll guide you. And then I'm gonna have you look at the whole, the whole image and close your eyes. So there's three things, so here we go. Close your eyes and that first thing you were drawn to, allow an insight to come to it. Come to your, come to your awareness, whether in body, mind. Now open your eyes. What's the next thing you might be drawn to? Close your eyes, just allow insight to flow. And now open your eyes, notice the whole image and close your eyes.
you get a longer look at this. Hold on, I'm just trying to get, there we go. So, if you got a message or some kind of insight, be it a word or whatever it is, and Karen, it is always an honor to your mother's alive in this community in my heart. So I digress, but love you. In the chat, put if you got a, some kind of insight, put yes. If you didn't, put no. If you're not sure, put not sure. Okay, so some yeses and Yes, the first time when I opened my eyes, I did, but second time, kind of. Any not sures or no's? All right, awesome. So for some of you, this was engaging, exhilarating. For some of you, this was a curious exercise. And if you didn't get any intuitive insight, you know, this may not be the mode or, you know, just allow it to be, you know, like how we um, let it percolate. And when you least expect it, something may arise. Or if it is something you're desiring intuitive insight on, take it into a walk, into a meditation. There are other modes. And for those of you who are like, this is nonsense, and you rather intellectualize, figure things out, and this whole intuitive stuff is something that is pointless, I just invite you to just be open. So Jesse Shell, who is a video game designer, he is the CEO, CEO of Shell Games, he's an author, He's also a futurist, and like other futurists, he says that as a collective, we are evolving out of the information age and into the imagination age. Now, we know divine, spiritual masters from all different faith traditions already know about the power. And we know that there's been genius of those individuals that we've talked about who knew about the power of our intuition. And so we realize that, you know, imagination is one of our 12 powers and that when we access it from the highest place of consciousness, from that place, not of personality, not of conditioning, but of our higher mind, that is the place Imagination is fueled by intuition, divine ideas that we catch a glimpse of. And since that is the truth, and this is our evolution, Jesse invites us to have an open mind and be part of this awakening and evolution. It's not like it's never existed before, but on a larger scale, people across um, disciplines are being open to this. And it's not this strict separation, business world, spiritual world, et cetera, et cetera. And so maybe this morning you didn't get an intuitive insight or there was um, not certain kind of a feel or perhaps at some point, you know, you might've had an idea float into your conscious awareness and you're like, is this like, is this an intuitive insight I'm supposed to follow or is this really something else? And so there are distinct differences between our intuition and all the other voices in our head and all the voices in the outside world that try to Get, in, get our attention. And we have been so conditioned in our intellectual way of doing things. And there's nothing wrong with the intellect. Intellect and intuition work hand in hand. How, however, they are also two separate, mutually exclusive things. And so we must understand them. So Kim Chesney gave us, you know, in just a moment, I'm going to give like a four criteria 
way to help filter it out. But she also has given us some characteristics or experiences of when we are in our intuitive flow and when we are flowing maybe with the intellect or our conditioning. So they are right at the top of, we can see side by side filtering, see, sensing the difference. So the difference is insight information. Insight flows, it happens. Information is something we're trying to analyze, figure out. That's a big distinction. It comes from, into it, insight comes from our super conscious. Uh, when we are centered in that place beyond our um, unconscious, conscious mind, but when we're tuned in, tapped in. And, you know, when we are, when it's not, it's coming somehow from our either our intellectual mind, our unconscious ways of being that we have been conditioned to, to be or a reflex. Um, so what I would like to do, some people are auditory, you know, their best way of taking in information is listening. And so you may wanna close your eyes and sense this, right? And for others, you're, you're better in reading it, okay? So you get to choose. But either way, notice when I share the characteristics of insight, what you're noticing in your being, and then notice what you're no, what happens when I'm sharing um, about when it's not intuition. So in the intuitive flow of insight, there is the experience of genius where we are in the ability to manifest, be in that place of realization, flowing with ingenuity, creativity, vision, and following an inner calling. Just notice what you experience as you take that in. And now let's take a look at when it is either condition, reflexive, or intellectualism. It's intellectualism. We, we, may ex we experience creative blocks. We're wondering what so-and-so did and how did they make it work or the ideas of others or we're overthinking. We're coming from instinct rather than intuition and we're following our inner critic. Just take a moment. And what do you notice as you take that in? And wait, there's more. <laughs> so again, other characteristics of insight, intuition is inspiration, an immediate apprehension rather than an emotional reaction, an inner knowing, feeling inspired, feeling expansive, feeling like you're being called out of comfort zone for your higher good and for the higher good of others. Synchronicities happen, telepathy, you know, where you have this idea or you're with somebody and you're really connected from a higher place and you say something and they're like, oh, I was just thinking that. Or I was just wanting to say that. And then we move to um, something else. Conditioning. Notice what, what you experience. Emotional reacting. Doubt. Worry anxiety, feeling disturbed, feeling restricted or resistant, tumult, diminishing thoughts and feelings. What are you noticing? So how did you experience the characteristics of intuition versus not intuition? Anybody want to share that in the chat? Anybody feel more alive or excited with some of the words for intuition versus the other? Anybody get insight as to how to help them distinguish? You're right, yes, no. Or you could still just take it all in. Oh, I think I 
just missed something. Uplifting, opening versus shutting down, fearful, synchronicity and the word expansive. Yes, fear, anxiety, worry, being not intuition, good insight. Awesome, thank you ladies for sharing. So that's a really long list and it's a great list. So here are how you can whittle it down to four basic criteria to help you. And so she gives these four statements for it to be the criteria to match intuition. And one, it emanates from truth and not an idea from the outside world or conditioning. Two, it is that allowing that flash of insight and inspiration and not the result of trying to figure something out. Three, it, it gives a sense of expansiveness and uplifting and does not come from a place of fear. So now I also just wanna stress here and I can do that later on as well. Sometimes when we get an intuitive hit, we are called to use our gifts or to do something that will take us out of our comfort zone. So it doesn't mean we know that was like, oh, you know, yes, you first get it and it's a knowing, but it's that knowing that you're called to and it is the, and it, and it feels ex expansive, it feels right, but maybe taking action on it's gonna require you to go out of your comfort zone and at that, that point, the fear arises. So make that distinction as you breathe into that. And then four, intuition. If you have something that you are called to do, something that you have asked for guidance on and it arises, if it is true intuition, it will abide and persist. It will not be something that comes as a fleeting thought or an idea. It will get your attention at different times in your life. So let's take a look at the first one. Intuition emanates from truth, not from the outside world. Insight is not the opinions of others. It's not based on the opinions of others, what somebody else wants you to do, what you've been conditioned to do. It's not looking at what the popular trends and views are. And it does transcend. It is not conditioning. So, I may have shared this with some of you. When I was contemplating going back to um, graduate school when I was teaching and being led to the field of um, marriage and family therapy, and it was based on a model that you're the guide on the side, that the person has all the answers within and you're helping them to uncover patterns, which was an aha to me, which matched unity teachings, unlike, you know, at a different school, it was based on a medical model. You had to study the DSM at the time it was four, and you had to like kind of make them fit into this medical model of what was wrong with them, right? So I was excited and I was in the hallway and I had shared, I don't know, I was like in the hallway in the morning because I was on hall duty. Yay, one of my favorite things of all times. <laughs> anyway, and there was another teacher there. We were just chit chatting. And so I told her I was excited. And she's like, at the time, she's like, well, like, aren't you divorced? Like, you think you could be a, a marriage and family therapist? And then I shared it with somebody who was in a spiritual circle who I kind of looked up to. And, and this individual is like, you know how many counselors are out there? Like, do you think you're going to be able to like have a successful business? And so as I took a deep breath, you know, I was like, oh, you know, that fear came up and I started to doubt myself. But as I stayed with it, it persists. But really what persists was the underlying desire for me to be in, in, in some way to help other people heal, to become empowered and counseling was just one form. And I'm in a different form right now, but that is that persisting part that I'll speak to. So take a moment, close your eyes and take this in. Intuition is the truth that you receive and only you alone can know with clarity 
as you begin to open up. So we have to shut out the outside world. Number two, intuition is a flash of insight, inspiration, a divine idea. Insight is not the result of thinking, rationalizing, and judging. I think I've been repeating this through the weeks that intellectualizing and intuiting are actually mutually exclusive. And when we're in the analyzing business, we're actually blocking the flow of intuition because we're in a different access of consciousness part of our brain, our higher functioning. And so instead of trying to figure things out, take a deep breath, close your eyes, relax, and let the truth surface and arise in you. And four, empower, inspire, and uplift. That is the characteristic, right? It is not sourced of fear or trying to get out of an uncomfortable situation. It is, doesn't have the characteristic of a personal agenda or egoic desires or needing to be right. It doesn't create polarization in your life and in the world, a win-lose situation, a black-white situation. I mean, and there's no gray. Um, it is expansive and it is something that calls us into the growth and evolution as uncomfortable it may be for you and for others, but it is for the highest good. And so, as I shared before, you know, that intuitive hit to, to be a source, a healing presence to an empowering presence, and it can take different forms, but that is the genuine intuition that I received. So as you close your eyes, take these words in. Be moved by inspiration rather than driven by uncomfortability and fear. Intuition abides and persists as a constant truth. It is not a fleeting thought, idea, emotion, a short-term high or fix that we get that makes us feel better in the moment and then lousy in the, in the next. And it is not a short-term solution to pain. And so take this in as you close your eyes. The wisdom of intuition is timeless. So for all of you who have been getting an intuitive hit and you've been rather choosing to ignore it because it would ask you to do something that is something out of comfort zone, Know that it is timeless. Be gentle with yourself and just ask, what is the first next step? What is just the next step? And take a deep breath and your intuition will greet you right where you are. So many of us have had the experience of maybe getting an idea you thinking that it was an inspired, intuitive idea. And then you took steps to act on it. And then you are met with one dead end after another, or it was like, nope, this is not it. You know, like this, I'm miserable. Things are not flowing. I'm having to make things happen too hard. And so, ah, eh, was this really, was my intuition wrong? was, can I really believe in this intuitive woo-woo stuff? Yeah, forget this stuff. So here is what Kim Chesney shares with us all. Intuition has never been and will never be wrong. Let me say that again. The higher voice, the gleaming of intuition, of truth within, has never been and will never be wrong. What actually is, is we in our interpretation of it can be wrong or not understanding. And what Kim shares is it's not an information issue. 
but a connection issue where we begin to ask from what place in consciousness has, have I been trying to access this? So I want to give you an example that might help, you know, to solidify this. So there's this woman, we'll call her Lucy. And Lucy was not happy with the job. She was, the, the, her job, it was unfulfilling. She was restless. She wanted out of there. And so she started reflecting, oh, you know, what is something that I can do, you know, that I will like? And, you know, she reflected and, and in that moment, she was actually having a cup of coffee and she just loves coffee. She loves the aroma of it. She likes to try coffees from around the world. She loves everything about it. And then she recalls a memory of her having a cup of coffee with her father. And in that moment, you know, she got like flutters in her heart. And so she has this idea, you know what? I'm gonna create an online store and I'm gonna sell coffees from all around the world. I'm gonna sell coffee mugs and all the, you know, all the things to, um, you know, coffee t-shirts, uh, the, the pour over kind of uh, equipment, the grinder, all of those things. And so she, you know, borrows some money and she has this stock and one month goes by, two months goes by, three months goes by, and she barely sells a thing. And on the things that she does sell, it is expensive to pack them and to ship them off to, to those who had ordered it. And then she just was like, forget this intuitive stuff. It's all wrong. How could I be wrong? And then becomes frustrated with her. And so Lucy decides to get some coaching from somebody who, you know, tries to help empower and, you know, bring people in touch with their coat to their intuitive insight. And as she asked her to delve at that inspiration, yes, she enjoyed the cup of coffee. And the thing, the image that sparked her was having that cup of coffee with her father. But as she delved closer, she realized that what was really alive in her was desire to connect with people, to build relationships. And it just happened to be over a cup of coffee. But what was more alive within her was her desire to get out of that job and get out now. So it was more like trying to have something to get out of a painful situation rather than understanding the intuitive insight of, um, that allowing of, you know, cause creating relationship can be nebulous and there's that the slight distinction. So as we all breathe into the desire to cultivate a deeper understanding of how intuitive insight speaks to us in the many different ways, we talked about the pathways last week and we're gonna be looking at each one further starting next week. It just reminds you of these four things that you can take in. Is it emanating from a truth and not from an idea from the outside world? Is it emanating with a truth that's alive within me? Yes, I like coffee, but really what was alive is I love creating connections and relationships with people. What is it? A, was it a flash of insight and inspiration or is it a the result, like Lucy, trying to figure something out. Yes, she got intuitive insight, but what was more pressing for her was to get out of something uncomfortable than to be pulled by passion. There was a pull by pain. There was more of a pull by pain. Is it expansive and uplifting? And does it light my fire? Yeah, I love that cup of coffee, but it's not the end all be all that lights my fire in my world. And does it abide and persist? Obviously for Lucy, it didn't abide and persist. So it was rather a fleeting idea rather than true insight. So my friends, I invite you to delve into that and practice creatively, listening into the space between thoughts for those intuitive 
insights. And I wish you a blessed and a very joyous week. Namaste. Thank you so much, Reverend Angela. Now read our affirmative prayer. Intuitive insight is the free flowing expression of divine truth that abides and persists as my inner guidance that is expansive and inspiring and supports my spiritual evolution.